Welcome back to Empowerment Nursing. I'm Linda and yeah, th this is Ashley <laughs> and you are tuning into our series In the Know where we make it simple. Today we're going to be talking about and simplifying fluid volume. And bear with us because we're trying out some new technology so this could be a complete disaster in which case we hope not but if it is we're all just going to laugh and learn together. So this being said Fluid volume status, why is this such a simple yet huge concept? So fluid volume seems like something, you know, we learn about fluid volume, it's not really that big of a deal. It is the hugest deal. And we see this because throughout our textbook, so in this book here, you can see it's about 200 some odd pages. Um, fluid volume status or excess or deficit comes up in that textbook, what would you say, 50, 60 times. It comes up in multiple disease processes. It comes up in multiple nursing interventions. It comes up in multiple pharmacological interventions. Fluid volume status is such a big deal. So when we talk about fluid volume status, we're gonna make it simple. So I want you to think about the vascular space in your body like a series of garden hoses because that's exactly how your vascular space inside of your body behaves. What do I mean by the vascular space? So first of all, let's define that. The vascular space, I'm talking about your arteries your veins and your capillaries. So any tunnel in your body or any hose in your body that delivers something from somewhere to somewhere else. It could be taking it down the body, bringing it back up from the bottom of the body, back out to the top. Any which way it's going, think of it just like a garden hose because it's delivering something somewhere. And Linda's going to give us a fun demonstration of why we're going to reframe the vascular space as a garden hose. So I just happen to have this garden hose on me. <laughs> uh, when we teach about fluid volume, we like to use this analogy because many people are familiar with a garden hose. So if I have a garden that's say 10 feet away from where I am at this moment, there are two ways for me to get the water through this hose to hit that garden 10 feet away. I can either go to the tap and turn up the tap, which would increase the volume in this hose, or I can squeeze this hose. I can vasoconstrict this hose, which would shoot the water 10 feet from where I'm sitting. On the other hand, if I had a garden two feet in front of me, how would I get the water out of this hose if a garden is just simply right in front of me? I can also go back to the tap and turn it down, which would decrease the volume in this hose or I can release the pressure on this hose and vasodilate this hose, decreasing the volume, decreasing the pressure in this hose in order to water a garden simply two feet in front of me. Now we do this frequently in the shower when we wash our hair. We have too much shampoo in our hair and lots of suds and we, we can't get the, the excess shampoo out of our hair. What do we do? We reach down and we turn up the tap in the shower which then increases the volume of water coming out the hose that we're standing underneath of in order to wash all that excess soap out of our hair. Mm -hmm. So this comes down to four simple words, which I'm gonna draw for you here. So four simple words that demonstrate such a large, complicated concept. And these are those four simple words. If you can remember these, you can automatically be a better nurse. So those four simple words are, Increased volume equals increased pressure. And of course the opposite is true as well. If we want to erase that, we can say, takes longer to erase than I anticipated. <laughs> decreased volume equals decreased pressure. Now why is this so important? Well, what Linda was getting at, right? We want to increase the volume, increase the pressure. We turn up the tap on that garden hose or we vasoconstrict it. We want to decrease volume, decrease pressure. We turn down the tap on that garden hose or we vasodilate it. Do you see what we're getting at here, nurses? Your whole vascular space and all of the hoses in your body behave identically to a garden hose. So why does this matter? When might we see this play out in the body? So we're gonna do a side-by-side -side for you, which really enhances our capacity to critically think. So Linda's gonna talk through the side-by-side -side, and I'm gonna make the list. So over here, we'll have increased volume and increased pressure. Look, it's like doctor's notes. You can barely read it. <laughs> we will get better at this. 
And over here we have decreased volume and decreased pressure. And when might we see these increases or decreases in our patient? Well, the first example would be hypervolemia. Go ahead. Cushing's disease would be another example. Right-sided heart failure. Anytime we infuse IV fluids, uh, so an example, that, that happens with a lot of patients, but particularly post-op uh, patients. Edema would be another example. And finally, any medication that would vasoconstrict or squeeze the hose would also be an example of this. On the other side of our chart, where we're talking about decreasing volume, decreasing pressure, hypovolemia, Addison's disease would be another example, diabetes insipitus, where we have excessive urination occurring, the use of diuretics like Lasix or ferrosamide, where we're removing fluid, any kind of trauma, we have a potential for this, and also medications that would vasodilate or release the hose would be another example of a situation. So you can see how understanding those four simple words, increasing volume increases pressure, Go back and think about that garden hose and how we're going to increase the volume and what, what is going to happen to the pressure. When we're talking about pressure, we're talking about blood pressure, right? So we're increasing volume in the patient's body. Whenever we increase volume, we increase blood pressure. Whenever we decrease volume, we decrease blood pressure. Okay, the reason why it's so important to understand this is it's not only gonna help you pass your registration exam, which we all know we all wanna do, um, but it also really enhances your capacity to critically think at the bedside when you can apply that concept to all of your patients, right? You have that knowledge of, well, if I put this fluid into this patient's IV, right, I'm going to increase their volume and increase their pressure. If I'm giving this patient Lasix into their IV, it's going to cause them to urinate because it's a diuretic. That would decrease their volume and decrease their pressure. And you then have the capacity to perhaps question physician's orders with the knowledge of what's going to happen to your patient. Um, so critical decision making, right? It really enhances your capacity to do that. So don't forget that garden hose and what's gonna happen when you turn up that tap or when you squeeze that hose or turn it down or dilate that hose inside of your patient's body. For more in the know and for all concepts simplified for your registration exam, check out our complete study package. Bye for now. Bye for now.